Welcome to the School of Obedience. Glad you're joining us in the Word of God today. Before we get into today's teaching, I'd just like to ask you to do a few things. First of all, please, if you have not subscribed to the channel, leave a like on the video. There's a share button there. Share this teaching with as many people as you can. The little bell icon below the video, click on that so you are notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. And in the description, there's a link to the Patreon page. If you can prayerfully consider supporting the ministry, supporting what we do, so we can continue the work that we do in spreading the gospel and teaching the word of God to as many people as we can. God bless you. Thank you again for joining. Let's get into today's teaching. Father, we thank you for your grace today, Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for scripture. We thank you for written scripture, Lord God. We thank you for the authority and the truth of scripture. Today, Lord God, I pray, Father, as we come before you, Lord, in studying your word, help us. Help us, Lord God, to grow in faith, to grow in your word. And may your grace be upon each and every one of us, Lord God Almighty, as we are kept always by your Son, his blood, by your love and mercy. We bless your name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Um, today, we want to continue in our teaching on the life of holiness. Okay, but um, I want to just revisit a teaching that we've done before which is on the Word of God, because the Word is essential to where we are right now. Okay, the world that we're living in now is taking a shift and a change. Okay, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to intensify in the coming months because of the shift of the world, okay, the shift of things in the spirit and so on and so forth. But to look at prophecy and constantly point out that prophecy here, prophecy this, and like I once said before, it sort of becomes some sort of entertainment. So in order for us to live and be prepared for number one, what God is doing, and for number two, what's happening in the world, and to have discernment, to know where we should be and what we should be doing, we need the word operational in our life. So today, that's what we want to look at. We just want to take a look at the word of God, okay? Because the word of God for us is our ultimate resource, there are so many people right now that are afraid, that are confused, that have doubt in their hearts, that are saying, where's all this going? Where's God in all this? What is happening? And a lot of people also are, are being challenged in their walk. It's feeling like God is far from us. But God has equipped us with something so powerful. Yes, to an unbeliever, it's just words. But to a believer, it is something so powerful and so life-changing. So today is just an encouragement to walk and be in the Word. In Psalms 119, 105, the, the, the psalmist says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now we want to just look at a few scriptures to see what the Bible says about itself. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, so first thing we notice there is all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Not some scripture, all scripture. All scripture comes from God. And then we see the benefit of scripture. It's doctrine for you to be established in a doctrine, to correct you, okay, to reprove you. That's to discipline you, to instruct you in righteousness so that you can be perfectly furnished unto all good works. The purpose of the Bible is to bring you to a place where you are glorifying God in the way you live. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay, so again, the word of prophecy, things that are coming, that must come to pass, things that have come to pass, were given by the Holy Spirit. Men were moved by the Holy Spirit. No private interpretation. These days you have a lot of people that um, call themselves prophets, but the things that they are saying do not tie up with Scripture. Everything has to be tied up and connected to Scripture. Psalms chapter 12 and verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. There is no fault in the word of God. There is no deception in the word of God. There is no manipulation. There is nothing false in the word of God. They are pure words. So if you want to speak anything truthful and pure, Speak the word of God. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee and you be found a liar. Every word is pure. There is nothing that can be added to the word of God. So we should never do that. And that is why I always say to you, be careful of wolves in sheep's clothing who then say that this word means this, something other than what the Bible is saying. Because it is deception, it is not true, and it is misleading. You will be found a liar if you add anything to the word of God. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Okay, we can stand on the word of God because the word of God will stand. Christ even says that the heaven and the earth may pass away, but my words will abide forever. So the word stands forever. Why? Because the word is true. It is established forever because it is true. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Now, just to take note there that the scriptures bring hope, okay? When you spend time in the Word, you have hope. The less time you spend in the Word, the less hope you have. Sometimes we focus so much on what's going on in the world. And we're looking at all this negativity. And we want to talk about that and fellowship in that negativity. But, and then we lose hope. It's like, you know, what's the point? 
But hope comes from spending time in the word. But I want you to notice something that he says here, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You have to be patient with the word. The word is not a quick fix. You have to be disciplined and dedicated with your time of reading the word. Spend time in the word. If you're giving five minutes a day to the Bible, nothing's really going to change in your life, if we're honest. Spend time in the word and spend be consistent in the word. Be dedicated in your sacrifice to read, to listen to, to study the word so that hope will grow in you. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Again, this speaks of the purity of the word. It discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart, separating what is righteous and unrighteous. But the word of God is active and is swift in its function. The word of God will bring you conviction when you read it and you're doing something wrong that you did not know was wrong. When you see it in the scripture, the word is living, it's quick. It will bring you conviction. It will change your mind. It will give you discernment and understanding. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, God said to Joshua, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. The word brings prosperity and success. And I need to add here, according to the will of God. Joshua lived in the will of God. And God says, if you practice the word, you will make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Okay, so we see the power and the authority of the word to bring the favor of God. I know he's talking to Joshua, but it's applicable to everyone that would obey the word of God. John chapter 1 and verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the first thing that this tells me is that the word of God is alive. Okay? That's the first thing. The word of God is alive. That means we can have fellowship with the word of God. We can have fellowship with the word of God. He says the word was made flesh and we know that this is talking about Christ so we can have fellowship with Christ. But how does Christ say we must have fellowship with him? By obeying his words. If you love me, you'll keep my words and the Father and I will come to you. Okay, so we can have fellowship with the word of God. We can experience the word in Christ and through Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. And he humbled thee, and he suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy father know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. The word sustains us. We live our spirit man, not our natural man. Yes, the natural man is sustained by eating food, but our spirit man is sustained by the word of God. So he's saying life is not only coming when you eat food through food, but you have to live by the word of God. What's the point if the flesh is alive, but the spirit is dead? What's the point? There is no point. So we live by the word of God. So as important as eating is, so must it be 
our in our fellowship with the word of god our reading our meditating on the word of god amen the word sets us apart okay the word sets us apart the word separates us from the world first john chapter 5 and verse 4 the world separates us from sin psalms 119 and verse 11 and the word also separates us unto god the word makes us his when you read the word when you meditate on the word and when you most importantly practice the word you are set apart from the world you are taken away from sin and you are set apart unto god you are holy you are made holy the word is essential J.C. Ryle says, happy is the man who possesses a Bible. Happier still is he who reads it. Happiest of all is he who not only reads it, but obeys it. It's good to read the Bible, but it's better to practice it. It's better to... to practice scripture and that is one of the things that we've got to make habit in our lives first let us get into the habit of reading scripture let us get into habit of reading scripture spending time in scripture spending time reading the bible allow the bible to speak to you and there's something that i want to say here okay some people spend 5 10 minutes reading the bible and then they stop and then when you say no you should spend more time in the bible they say no i'm meditating on the word that i've read i don't just read through the bible i read that little scripture and then the whole day i'm meditating that's a lie okay the bible is god talking to you so if i'm having a conversation with you and then i say something and then you say okay let's stop talking for the day because i want to meditate on what you're saying that's foolishness the bible is god speaking to you allow the word to speak to your heart okay so read the bible as much as you can and yes if there's a verse that catches your heart write it down meditate on it later think about it ponder on it later but read through what scripture is saying because this of i meditate on one verse that's where we get the mess of people now misinterpreting one verse of the bible and saying that no this verse is saying this and this is what i must do and like i always tell people an example of paul's letters paul's letters were written as one complete letter it wasn't written in verses so read the whole thing to get the full context of what is been said of what god is saying to you so that god can use his word to work in your life and yes if you want to ponder and meditate on a particular portion of scripture write it down and later through the day ponder and meditate on that so what does the bible do for you why is scripture important in the life of holiness and separation what does scripture do first of all scripture gives you faith scripture gives you faith romans chapter 10 and verse 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith comes by hearing hearing the word of god so faith comes we must continue in the word because the more time we spend in the word what happens faith comes and this is for people that are struggling in faith this is for people who say that i want to have faith i want to believe yes i have fear and doubt in my life but i don't want to be that way I want to have faith in God. I want to trust God. What must I do so that my faith grows? Continue in the word. Because the more time you spend in the word, faith comes. Okay? 
Stay in the word as much as you can. Why? Because if you do that, faith comes. It's not maybe your faith will come. The more time you spend reading the Bible, practicing the Bible, faith comes. When you hear the word and you trust that word, what happens? Faith comes. So do you have doubt in your life? Are you looking around you and are you afraid? Are you lacking in faith? When you pray for something, are you lacking faith that it will come to pass? Spend time in the word because faith comes. Faith is essential in the establishment of the word in our lives. We need faith. So in order to get that faith, hear the word. Spend time in the word of God. Have a relationship and fellowship with the word of God. To get faith, we must hear the word. To experience the word, we must have faith. You understand? For me to get faith, I must hear the word and receive it. And to experience the word, for the word to come alive in my life, I must have faith. Faith is essential, thus making spending time in the word very important. What does faith do? Faith helps you overcome the world. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 5 it says, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Where did you hear about Jesus? Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the word of God. We got faith by believing the gospel of Jesus Christ and it helps you overcome the world. What is the world? Everything that glitters and shines, all the temptations and, you know, you live your life of, I want this and I want more of this and I want, and we trapped in the world. And because we trapped in the world and we trapped in desire and want, we no longer do the duty and the work and the will of God. But to overcome the world, we need faith, faith in Christ. And that faith only comes by the word of God. Faith justifies you. We talked about being justified the other day. You are justified by faith. You are made righteous before God by faith. Again, faith in Jesus Christ. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in, of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You are saved, made righteous by faith in Christ. Faith pleases God. Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We cannot go through life saying that, no, God understands. My faith is weak. God, it is impossible to please God without faith. Faith pleases God. Prayers are answered in faith. Matthew 21, 22, All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Again, this must be in line with the word of God, but prayers are answered in faith. Where does faith come from? The word of God. How do I get faith? By hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. People always ask me, they always say, is it okay to listen to the Bible? Isn't it wrong, you know? Isn't it less effective? Reading has a higher impact than listening. It's true. But if you're listening with repetition, 
It has the same impact. And I, I, I like that it says faith comes by hearing the word of God. And it says that because in those days, not everyone had access to the written word, okay? It was read to them. So you hear, you listen, and then you apply. Faith comes by hearing. Spend time in the Bible and what will happen? Faith will come. Yes, eventually faith will come. Faith comes from the word. There is no other way, no other place that you can get faith. Faith comes from the word of God. The Bible gives you a rebirth, the word. It gives you a rebirth. It makes you new. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So you are born again by the word of God. You are given new life, a new way of living by the word of God. For all flesh, all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by the which the gospel is preached to you. So that word that is preached to you by the gospel of Christ endures forever. All flesh is like grass. All the glory of man is like the flower of grass. It's going to fade. It's going to fade. You live your life to build an empire for yourself in this world. You live your life to build glory unto yourself in this world. And you give everything, including your soul. And in a moment, in a moment, just by the space of one breath, you lose everything. Because when you die, all your glory is gone. When you die, all your glory is gone. Just one breath away, but the word remains forever. So this eternal word, if it is in your heart, it means that you then become eternal. So give much attention and much time to the word of God. Derek Prince says that everything in the Bible is for the benefit of man. Everything is to bring you to God. There's nothing in the word for your demise and destruction. Everything God has put there is so that we can benefit from his mercy. We can benefit from his grace. The word is there to instruct you, to teach you, to guide you. It's for the benefit of your soul. What does the seed of the word do? It reproduces an incorruptible life. And I just talked about that, that eternal life, because it's an eternal seed, Peter says. So it reproduces an incorruptible life. In good ground, the word will bear fruit. The seed of the word will bear fruit. But others fell into good ground, Matthew 13, 8 says, and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Okay, it will bear fruit in your life. It removes the desire to sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. First John chapter 3 and verse 9. Okay, now, here I just want to clarify something. This is talking about the new man, the new nature. It's talking about Christ in you. Because 
we all sin. I would love to say that I no longer sin because I have the word in my life, but we all sin. And that is why the need for Christ is constant in our life. But he's talking about the regenerated man. Paul says that it is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. It's the Christ that lives in you that causes you not to commit sin. Now, you must be watchful and you must work hard so that you do not sin. You must be aware of the evil that is naturally in man and stand against it. But we do not have sin. We no longer commit sin out of choice because of the new man that is in us through the word of God. The word is an incorruptible seed. The word does not corrupt you. The word does not make you desire the world. The word does not make you love money, love the things of the world. It does not corrupt you to become selfish and greedy and self-centered. The word is incorruptible and will preserve you for all eternity. And I'd just like to say something here before we continue, that this teaching that I'm doing on the Word is not an exhaustive teaching. It's not everything about the Word. It's just certain highlights that I felt in my heart that I should pick out so that we can stir up a desire for the Word of God. Okay, so even what I was saying about faith, and it's not exhausted, okay? It's not something that is taught in completion. There's so much more. What does the word do for you? What's the next thing? It nourishes the soul. Like food would nourish the body, the word nourishes the soul. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Okay, now, the word feeds your spirit. It feeds the spirit man. Okay, I want you to understand something here. Most of us are babies in Christ. Most of us. Okay, so if I say to you, go to the book of Ezekiel and explain what Ezekiel is talking about, most of us won't understand because we are babes in Christ. And a lot of teachers of the word teach that in a, a derogatory way. You know, saying, oh, you're a baby, you can't eat meat. And No, everyone started as a baby. Start and desire the milk of the word. When a baby is born, what does a baby do when a baby is born? A baby constantly feeds sleeps and feeds, sleeps and feeds. Okay, that's basically part of the baby's life in its early years. Why? So its bones can go strong, so its mind can develop, so its organs can be strengthened, its muscle tissue can, can develop. You, you understand? And that's the same thing with the Word of God. Start as a babe in the word. Don't start saying that, oh, I need to understand the depth of Jeremiah or what, what's been said in Micah. And I need, don't start there. Start in the milk of the word. And as you grow, you will begin to understand scripture and it will be easy for you to interpret scripture with scripture. Milk is for the less mature spiritually and meat for the mature, okay? But it is scripture and it is necessary for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hebrews 5, 13 to 14, this is the verse that people use and they use it to insult people that are new. But we all knew at something in the world. This verse is not meant to degrade those that are not mature in the word. 
those that are not experienced in understanding what Scripture is saying. For finding the revelation of Christ in Scripture, we start, unskillful people, start with milk. And from milk, we will develop to a place of meat. It takes time, it's gradual. But you, your part is to be dedicated to the word of God and grow in the word. The word sustains like bread. Jesus says, and he's quoting Deuteronomy, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Word sustains the spirit. It gives sustenance and life and nourishes the spirit man. It gives life. The word keeps you from sin. The word keeps you from sin. Psalms 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If we would heed to the word, if we would live our lives in subjection to the word, it will be seldom that we sin. Or maybe we will not sin at all if we are constantly guided by the word of God. The problem is that most of the time, we shun the word and we say it's hard. The word keeps you from sin. It removes the desire to sin. Remember what I was saying just now about the new man in you, Christ in you. Christ has no desire to sin. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that live in me. The word removes the desire to sin. When you are constantly in the word and constantly practicing the word and the word through Christ is alive in you, you will not have the desire to sin. The word prospers you in the will of God. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in truth. How is the soul prospering? By walking in truth. By walking in truth. So he's saying, because the word is working in you, now may you prosper and may you be in health as your soul prospers. Let it show on the outside what is going on inside of you. Let it show on the outside what Christ is doing inside of you. The word will bring God's favor in your life. You make your way prosperous in the will of God. And we read from Joshua 1.8 when he says that this book shall not depart out of your mouth, but meditate therein day and night. Because if you do that, you will be able to observe everything that is written in it and you will make your way prosperous and have good success and emphasis in the will of God. In Deuteronomy 29.9, God tells the children of Israel, keep the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in everything you do. Everything you do. Again, that is in line with the will of God. In Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. God was saying these things in Deuteronomy to the children of Israel, but it shows us that obedience to the word brings us the favor of God in our life. And everything we do that is in line and connected and in sync with his will, it will prosper. It will prosper. So we need the word. So often what we've done is that we've been told to seek after not prosperity according to the will of God, but things of this world, prosperity by the measure of the world. You know, we, we hear sermons of 
eight cars and five houses and a wardrobe full of shoes and no those are worldly desires i'm talking about prospering in the will of god and this comes from the word of god it comes from the word of god now i want you to understand something here what we need to do now to take away all that has tarnished our soul all that has corrupted us all the years and hours that we spent watching television i i i i i truly desire in my heart that believers around the world would spend as much time as they do on television in the word and as much time as they do in the word on television okay and i'm not speaking to everyone because i know some have given a lot of time into the word and they don't watch television and so on and so forth but i'm talking about generally people spend hours and i shouldn't even say television i should say television and social media people spend hours going through tiktok going through instagram stories on twitter on 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 facebook on youtube hours and hours watching movies and then 5 minutes in the word of god 10 minutes in the word of god i wish that could be reversed because there is more impact and more power in spending time in the word of god and a better influence now what i would like to do and this is just a suggestion i am not calling anyone a baby in christ I'm not calling anyone a beginner okay but this is a suggestion and this is something that I will be practicing in my own life it's something that I've learned and I'm going to practice and I'm teaching so that you may learn practice and teach it as well I want to start as a beginner in Christ in the word that's what I want to do I want to start as a babe in the word I want to start with milk. That's what I want to do. And you can say that oh no, but you've been having meat all this time. Have I really? Because what's been going on in most of our lives is that we spend time in the Bible, read 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 and then we skip a day or we skip a week or we skip a month and we don't have full understanding of the word of God. and then we're not practicing the word of god which is the biggest part of it all so i'd like us to have a reset and start again in the word of god and this is what we are going to do if you'd like if you'd like to join me in this first of all we're going to read we're going to start reading the word now as a newbie in the word as a beginner in the word we are first going to read Matthew chapter 5 chapter 6 and chapter 7 every day okay i used to do this every day but i stopped for a while why because i'm a baby that's what babies do so <clears throat> from today Matthew chapter 5 chapter 6 and chapter 7 every single day without fail because that is the foundation of the life of obedience and then also we want to read the book of john first read the book of john because the book of john reveals christ to you it's the revelation of christ the book of john he shows christ as the son of god and then after that we want to read the book of acts the book of acts is the revelation of the church i want to ask you a question if you say that no no i'm not a baby in christ i'm a meat eater i'm a meat in fact i don't only eat meat i eat the bultong of the word the tough meat i want to ask you a question meat eater are you living the way the church in acts lived are you practicing the life of a true believer as they did in the book of acts are you walking in the holy spirit 
first of all, because that was the beginning of the church. So we read John, so Christ is revealed to us. And then we read Acts, because the church is revealed. If I'm to be a part of the true church, this is how I must be, and this is who I must be. This is what I must do. And then we go through Romans, because Romans then positions you and shows you how you must live, guides you to understand life, what is life and how you must live. And yes, Romans is a little bit complicated, but if you've read through John and Acts and you understand and Christ and the church are revealed to you, Romans will then be simple to you. And Romans will give you the answers to what is life about. And when you finish these books, read them again. And when you finish them, then you can go and start searching through Scripture. Start from the beginning in Genesis and find God from the beginning and see Christ in every Scripture from the beginning all the way from Genesis to Revelation. But today... Make a commitment in your heart. I've already made this commitment when I was preparing and praying about this message that I'm going to start in John. I'm going to go to Acts and I'm going to go to Romans. And the next thing we do is memorize or meditate. Put the word in your mind and put the word in your heart. And you start memorizing Psalms 119. Now, if you'd like, it's a good place for you to start memorizing John, Acts, and Romans. I always encourage people, these are the books that I encourage that you memorize at first. Okay, you can pick any one of these books. The book of John, the book of Acts, the book of Romans, the book of Psalms, and the book of Revelation. Okay, those five books, if you can pick any one of those books and start memorizing them. And don't set yourself high targets. Do you know that if you memorize two verses a week, just two verses a week, you're doing better than the time you did not memorize anything at all. Isn't that amazing? You would have two verses in your heart that you never had in your heart before. Start somewhere. And my advice is to start in Psalms 119. But if you have started on the other books, that's fine. But Psalm 119 will put a love for the Word of God in your heart. And then you continue to memorize the rest of the Psalms, if you like, or any of the other books. The next thing that you must do as a believer is pray. Remember, reading the Word is God talking to you. Okay, memorizing the word is putting the word of God, trusting what God is saying to you. Prayer is you talking to God. And you pray at least twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. And I'm saying this as though, like, like we are new in Christ. I know that now, you know, some, some have grown in Christ and you are praying faithfully three times a day. Okay, but for those that want to reset, like what I will be doing, like new in Christ, at least in the morning and in the evening, at least twice a day, you dedicate hours to prayer, worship. Now, I'm not saying praise, I'm saying worship. You worship at least once a day. Worship is to come and acknowledge God, pay homage. Worship is to pay homage. You know, we were taught when we were young, when we were young, that when you pass, when you pass by a house. In fact, I, I remember when I was uh, working in the electrical field, we were setting up, um, you know, the overhead cables. Okay, we were setting them up in an area called Rugare. And um, in Rugare, when we were passing houses, the guys used to tell me, when you see an old woman sitting outside or an old man, you must greet them. Okay, because you are showing respect. 
you are acknowledging their age and you are showing respect. So every time we pass the house, we see an old lady, would either go in or stand by the gate and greet them to show respect. And this is what you do with God. You pay homage. You come and you bow. Worship is to bow. Okay. And I know that people are still used to singing songs. That's praise. Worship is to bow and pay homage. You come and you pay homage to God. Listen to this with your life. You commit to serving God. You honor him with your life. And you come once a day and you bow before God and you pay homage. And the next thing that you must do, you must tell someone that you are saved through Christ. You must testify. It's not hard. Every day, make sure that you tell somebody. Put it on your status. Instead of taking pictures of food, put it on your status. That I am saved, that I believe in Jesus Christ. That I am saved and atoned for by the blood of Jesus. That I believe that Christ is the resurrected Son of the Most High God. Every single day you must testify. Because if you do not testify, the word dries up in your heart. That's the truth. If you do not testify about what Christ has done, the word dries up in your heart and your testimony may be the reason that somebody else seeks Christ. And then you must have fellowship with the brethren in the word of God. Now, I just want to say this here. Fellowship does not mean go to church. Okay, because sometimes we're so comfortable with, oh, I went to church. Did you have fellowship in the word of God? Did you talk to each other about the scripture? Did you encourage each other in psalms and hymns as the Bible says? Did you do that? Because oftentimes that's what we think. Oh, I went to church. I went. That, that's not it. That's not what fellowship. Fellowship is a unity, is togetherness. I have fellowship with my family in the word of God. Okay, we used to, on, 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 on Sabbath days, we used to sit down and then let the kids have a time to teach us, talk to each other, tell, tell each other what we learned in the word in the week, recite what we've memorized. And that's what we need to start doing. That's fellowship in the word, not attending a function. It's fellowship in the word. So you need to have fellowship with each other as families, if you're a family there, okay? Or visit each other and sit in the word and have fellowship in the word. Talk about the word. Testify in the word. Have fellowship in the word. Not fellowship, you know, we, we like here yeah, fellowship and swallowship, okay? That's not just sitting and gathering and talking about soccer and talking about uh, basketball and whatever is going on and talking about floods and no, that's not fellowship. Fellowship in the world is building each other's faith in scripture, talking about scripture, Sitting down later on today and say, hey, the word that was taught today, what did you think? What touched you the most? What should we do about it? How can we practice it? That is fellowship in the word. These things are important. But I must say this, the first one is the most important, to read the word of God. Because reading the word of God then leads you to practice the rest. So this is the reset that I am having in my life and would ask that you do in your life. From today, for the rest of your life, Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6 and chapter 7. If you'd like, it takes 15 minutes to do it all in one go in the morning. But if you like, chapter 5 in the morning, chapter 6 in the afternoon, chapter 7 in the evening. And let's read through John Acts and Romans, okay? And then everything else falls into place when the word is working in your life. What is going on in the world today must come to pass. Do you understand? People are messaging me and people are concerned about what's happening in the world. 
All right, I've actually stopped watching news for a while. All right, I'm hearing from people about um, what happened in South and um, what happened in the States and what happened in Germany and what's going on in Europe. And there's a uh, shortage of food looming in Europe. And I'm I'm hearing from people, I've stopped watching news because I, I want to just spend time in the Word of God. All right. I want to get to know the word because what was happening is you spend a little time in the word and a lot of time following those things and it puts fear in your heart and you start sitting and thinking about what are we going to do? What must we do? How are we going to survive? We need to prepare a go bag. We need to get meal ready to eat that the military use because we're concerned about what's going on in the world. Not that doing those things are wrong, but that is a reaction, not to scripture. It's a reaction to the world. It dries up the word in your heart. That's what it does. And it puts fear, it puts doubt, and people start asking questions. So we want to spend time in the word. We want to feast on the word so that our faith is encouraged that faith will come and those of us that have that have neglected the word and our faith was becoming weak and doubt was looming in our hearts and we stopped practicing the word we need faith to come again so we need to spend time in the word so that is what we are going to do amen it's very very important that we participate in the word of God and that we live the word of God so that we can experience the power of the word in our lives and most importantly so that we can know God through his word. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today, Lord God Almighty, for your word. I thank you for the authority and the truth of your word. I pray for this lesson that we've learned today, Lord. I pray it sink into our hearts and it convict us. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that from this lesson that we will apply and practice in the name of Jesus. Bless us with wisdom to practice the word, Lord God to practice what we were taught today and let your mercy and grace abound toward us, Lord God, and let your favor, Lord God, flow towards us, Lord, so that your word is easily understood in our hearts, Lord. We pray now for understanding and wisdom as we read the word and as we choose to live the word in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you and thank you again for joining us on this teaching. I hope that you were inspired and encouraged to apply the word of God and to practice the word of God. And as always, as you know, as true disciples of Christ, we learn. We practice and we teach because that's the only way to do it. Amen. I'll see you in the next one.